Hi, everybody. I'm David Fry. I'm the volunteer host for the International Heart Classic Virtual Dog Show. We hope you're going to be able to join us in some form or fashion for this great history-making event. And uh, we're happy to be able to bring you a great panel of judges and uh, majors in several breeds, I think. Wink, wink. I'm just kidding about that. But we do have entries in almost every breed. We have over 300 entries uh, that just closed uh, this past weekend. A great panel of judges included amongst them, my friend Lee Whittier. Hi, Lee. Hi, David. It's nice to have you. Nice to have you with us now and nice to have you on our panel. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. What, uh, what breeds are you judging? Or what breed? I'm judging Rottweilers, my original breed. Well, that's cool. I had Rottweilers for over 25 years and um, enjoyed them very much. And now that I'm living on the West Coast and judging more, uh, I have other, other dogs. Other dogs. <laughs> Smaller <laughs> dogs. Easier to carry. All right. Well, good. We're glad you're with us. What are you doing to kill the time here in, in uh, Lockdownville? Oh, well, I'm really busy because my business is dog show mentor and I have had that business since 2016 where I mentor owner handlers on how to win more in the ring so it's been a lot of fun where were you when I needed you exactly <laughs> well that's good well it keeps you busy and people are looking for things to do with their dogs too and I think that's the great thing we have going here with the virtual dog show is that it's new to everybody there have been a couple of them uh, bouncing around a little bit but um, this is the first one because it's gone out for a, the great cause for the American Heart Association and for the K AKC K9 Health Foundation. So that makes it kind of fun and interesting, brings us all together. It does. And exhibitors are really excited about doing these virtual dog shows. And it, it's been great practice for them because they know that it's going to improve their presentation in the end right. and the end is hopefully near where we'll be back at dog shows soon well that's the thing we say they say well geez if this is fun you want to keep doing them i said no i want to be in the ring with my <laughs> dogs and my friends and and uh, doing dog shows on television again so we all hope for a happy ending here and we in the meantime we want everybody to be healthy and safe and stay well with them and their dogs what, um, what's your vision of a virtual dog show and, and the judging that's going to go into it? Oh, virtual dog shows, I think have, um, I, I have an opinion about virtual dog shows, David. All right. Um, and that is that I think they do have a place. I thought a lot about this because so many people have also asked me, so, you know, are we just going to go to virtual dog shows? Can you really judge a dog uh, based on, a video and the answer is we may not want to go to virtual dog shows totally of course we want to be there we want to be with our friends we want to have our hands as a judge I want to have my hands on the dog I want to be able to look into their eyes I want to see what they're what they're what they're all about mentally um, I want to be able to stand where I want to stand I want to be able to feel the coat texture so those are the important things about being there and being in person with the exhibitors and with the dogs. Um, but the virtual dog shows do have a place in helping people prepare for those kind of shows. And also, I think where we are today is that some people cannot leave. And I'm talking about in the longer run. Some people can't leave their homes for whatever reason. They may not be able to travel to dog shows, and they may want their breeding stock evaluated on some level. And so in my imagination, I think, well, what if these people who couldn't do it in person had the opportunity to have their dog evaluated on a different level? So that's, that's what I'm thinking. Well, you're mentoring people to, to prepare them to go in the ring. So um, you would you would probably be looking for the same things from your exhibitors that you're that you're teaching in your class. Do people win extra points if they if they do it exactly the way you're teaching it, or do they, or uh, or do they need to do what they do? Well, in 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 some ways, yes. But what I'm really looking for is to see the dog's virtues. 
And so I want whoever's showing the dog, whether it's an owner, handler, professional, show me the dog's virtue. Show me what is great about your dog. And that's what's so exciting as a judge is to see, oh, look at this dog. I can see all his virtues. That's, what, that's what's fun about being a judge. We all want to have that, the one that made our socks roll up and down or you know, gave us goosebumps. That's what we, we want to see in the ring and, and virtually as well. I think that's the exciting part of it is that uh, we all talk about that dog shows. We all talk about judging from outside the ring. And, and, and even the most seasoned dog show people can stand outside the ring and not agree with what a judge is doing inside the ring. Um, <laughs> you know, and we call it judging outside the ring. So how come you didn't pick my dog? And it's the same thing that somebody may walk in off the street and never having been to a dog show and say, I like that one the best. How come you didn't like that one? So, um, I think there's a lot of the educational process that we're talking about here can go into what we're doing with the virtual dog show. It can that the general public can learn something from what, from what we are doing and specifically from what you are doing as the judge. And what made me even more excited about this show is that it is benefiting the American Heart Association and it's benefiting the part of the American Heart Association that supports the bond between humans and dogs. And that has such tremendous value. It has had value for my family members. It has value for me. For those of us uh, who have dogs and live with dogs and uh, in my case, use them as therapy dogs, uh, visiting people in need. I think we have a great understanding, but we can talk about a lot of those things that dogs that that dogs have been shown to do now. And and part of it is uh, involving the heart. It, it lowers your heart rate, lowers your blood pressure when you interact with a dog. And I think that's the great thing about the partnership with the AHA here. I can't imagine, and I would love to see the statistics on how many people have benefited from uh, visiting in hospitals and other facilities and how many people have benefited in their own homes. And I, I am imagining, in, in my mind, I'm imagining that every single person who owns a dog benefits, whether no they question. know it or not. No question. Uh, when you come home from a tough day, the dog's there waiting for you, wagging their tail. Um, they're here with me now <laughs> every moment. They're probably looking around saying, you know, you weren't supposed to be here every minute of every day. <laughs> so we're, we still are kind of feeling one another out. But, but uh, the healthy bond for life, that's uh, heart.org dot healthy bond for life, um, talks about all of these things, whether it's lowering the heart rate, lowering your blood pressure. You know, a dog walks into the room and the energy changes. And, and those are among the things that happen. And, and uh, my therapy dog group um, has been very involved in a lot of those things. And, and so we know what's going on with the dogs. And I think people do too. And that's part of the appeal of watching them in a dog show. You're seeing the dog do something it, it's having fun doing and with the people they love and just having a great time. That's a huge part of what I look for as a judge is that the dog have breed specific temperament and particularly that if their breed is, is so inclined that they be joyful, they be happy in the ring. Now we know that there's some breeds where this standard specifically states that the uh, performance should not be uh, the most important part, it should be the soundness or the, the, the silhouette or the head. But many breeds, the Cavalier for one, most of the Spaniels, the toy breeds, uh, many of the non-sporting breeds, all should have the joie de vivre when they're in the ring. And, that's, and we want to see that. We want to see a joyful, happy dog. Yeah, that's great. And, and part of what part of the educational process, as you mentioned, not every dog should have the same temperament or same attitude. It depends on what they were bred to do. And we, we talk about that in dog shows, uh, especially when we're doing them on television. We say that uh, this kind of set yourself up and stand there like a statue might not be right for every single breed, but it sure looks good 
on the ones <laughs> that do it right, that do it like that. But um, I can no more get my Cavalier to stand like a statue than, you know, than, right. than uh, you know, head to the food line. But, um, but they're great dogs, and all these dogs do wonderful things for us every single day. So I think that's the great thing about the association here. We've, we've got great support from people in the dog world like uh, the Canine Chronicle, uh, Purina Pro Plan, uh, is being very involved with us, and, and uh, I think that's what makes it a, a family, a family event, a family sport. Getting all the people together here, so we're excited about it. We're excited to have you on the panel. Geez, we got 133 judges on our panel. Have you ever been on a panel that big? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> well, we don't have to pay for your air and hotel, so that's a there good start. Go. <laughs> but it allows us what it's allowed us to do. Not that you're in this category, or I hope I'm not quite in this category yet, but there's a lot of our very senior judges who can't get out and about quite so much anymore. So we've got a number of them who are breed experts in particular breeds or just in the sport of dogs that are on our panel. And, and, and it, again, going back to the idea of a family sport, uh, we're bringing people in that can, that can uh, help celebrate the dog in our lives as we, as we do this great virtual dog show. It was exciting for me to see the quality of judges on the panel. And as you say, bringing in that deep knowledge that people have who have been judging for a long time is um, it's exceptional. And I loved that the uh, creators of this panel uh, thought long and hard about who are the experts in their breeds and in their groups. And, and a lot too is, is kind of reflected with um, the people on the panel. We have a lot of family units on the panel with, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, a pair, uh, people who started out and then their, their children and maybe even a third generation, their children's children um, to show what, what great fun this sport is and what it does for families as well. So we're excited about that. I'm excited to have you on the panel. I'm excited to be able to share you with the world and, and uh, have some time with you here today, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing you <laughs> somewhere down the road. And so. uh, you don't live too far from me actually. So um, you live up in Vancouver. Or Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver area. Right? Yeah. I'm down here on the Oregon coast most of the time. And, and uh, we see each other at dog shows and, and we see all of our friends at dog shows. We want to be able to do that again, but we yeah. want to be able to do something in the meantime that helps remind us of all these great things that happen to us because of our dogs. And remind us of our relationships with each other and how important they are. There you go. Well said. Thank you. Thank you so all much. Right, Lee. It's great to talk to you. It was great seeing have you. A great have a great time judging and I'll see you somewhere down the road. All right. Bye-bye. Right, be well.